a holder of numerous medical degrees, Dr. Roberta Lynn Bondar, was chosen from more than 4,000 applicants to be one of six members of the Canadian Astronaut Program in December 1983. Already a neurologist and physician, she would train another eight years for her mission. Her tenacity lay in her belief that she could make a genuine contribution to the space program. When the opportunity arose for me to, to participate in the astronaut program, when I had one, of course, it was, I was ready and eager, and I had the qualifications, I was prepared, and I was also ready to take the risk. And I think without those two things, and the opportunity being the third thing, uh, it just obviously never would have happened. When you speak with her, the most demanding component was the physical. Um, she had to uh, attain a certain level of physical fitness uh, before she would be even considered for the program. And then she had to uh, maintain a higher level in order to be certain that she'd get on one of the spacecraft. She's a very um, resilient person. I mean, she's suffered various setbacks, obviously, and but she always comes bouncing back and uh, she has a very positive attitude and she's a very determined person. So that when she has a goal in mind, she gives her all to reach it. On January 22nd, 1992, Dr. Bondar, a native of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, would become the first Canadian woman to travel in space. It was incredible. I have not sat through anything in the Olympics, to me, that was as emotional as flying and seeing this country from coast to coast, listening to the national anthem, and seeing the beautiful place that it has on the planet and seeing all its wonderful resources. Aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery, Dr. Bondar's role was to study how the human body reacted to weightlessness and the growth of plants without gravity. Currently, Dr. Bondar is researching the physiological change that occurs to humans in space and how it applies to life on Earth. My particular area of interest is looking at blood flow to the brain and we were able to expand those data on subsequent missions, and I've supported something like two dozen pre-flight and post-flight uh, missions looking at the same observations. Our speculation is that the human body controls its blood flow uh, within the range that we normally expose to. And because we're continually changing postures within our gravitational field, we're exposing our circulation to a wide variety of blood pressure changes. Space is an environment in which we have the opportunity now of testing theories that, that we've thought are right because they work here on Earth, take them into space, they don't pan out the same. So there's obviously other factors on the Earth that we haven't understood and they're being, they're being opened up and displayed because of spaceflight. And it's exciting because then we can go say, well, if that's not how it works, let's find out how it really does work and then we can maybe try to attack that system differently than we are doing right now to try to repair it. She's good at helping people help her define what exactly are the problems. How do we boil this issue down to the bottom line that, that we can address? And then she's very good at finding the people who have the expertise to address the various uh, aspects of the problem. An excellent motivational speaker with a strong concern for the environment Dr. Roberta Bondar is a positive role model for young Canadians and a source of pride for the Canadian space program. I think we have no other hero in Canada right now and maybe in history who has surpassed her in very much. Looking at the people in the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame, it's incredible that my face will now be in the same corridors as these individuals and it is indeed an honor, it's very humbling.